the Rose Bowl. So Rose Bowl kicked off today, Alabama and Michigan. And I got to be real with you. One of the better playoff games that I remember us seeing. Um, dude, the granddaddy of them all. Watching, watching Michigan in those awesome uniforms, watching Alabama, it was one of the better college football games I'd seen in a while. One thing that wasn't good, though, Alabama could not stop Michigan's front, not even the D-line. They were sending, you know, twist, guys from the outside, linebackers, delayed blitzes. Did not matter. They got after Jalen Milrow all in the first half. Alabama comes storming back, but got to give J.J. McCarthy a lot of credit. The grit and the toughness that he showed throughout the game, getting them back. Blake Corum, how do you do, good sir? Uh, he gets the score there at the end. Michigan winds up beating Alabama 27-20. to 20, And obviously, we'll talk about the bad call there at the end or what we think about it. But what did you think of this game and breaking it down? The single most important thing in this game, Blake, that I said a month ago and then leading into the week is that Alabama has not faced a team that has linebackers as athletic as Michigan's that are supported by as deep of a defensive line as they had. And Barrett and Colson, they sent them re relentlessly after Jalen Milrow. They mm -hmm. sent so much pressure, and then when they didn't, they did a phenomenal job of rallying and attacking him and preventing him from picking up large gains. He had a couple long rushes, and that was about it. But the speed that they had at the linebacker position is ultimately what won them the football game because it, at the end of the day, because he couldn't do his normal deal where he – you know, he steps up in the pocket and he picks up those long runs. It led to him hanging on to the ball too long. It led to those five or six sacks that happened in this game. And his issues, not being able to get the ball out as a passer, cost them offensively. They ran the ball fine, but Michigan had a, a fantastic, fantastic game plan that helped win them this, uh, this football game. Well, look, so here are the big things for me. I think Alabama missed on way too many Michigan mistakes. Way too many yes. Michigan mistakes, yes. okay? So many times they had really good field position and either the snaps, okay? Like, remember, they had two bad snaps. They were trying to march down the field. I, I mean, and their offense had something going. They had two bad snaps. They just could not – they can't – it's crazy for me to say this, and – maybe Lady Luck was playing on the side of Bama this year, but they always seem to overcome those mistakes. Well, when you face good teams and you make boneheaded mistakes, it's very difficult for you to overcome. But, Joe, I, I, I'm going to say one thing to you, though. I agree with what you're saying in the front seven of Michigan, okay? But what did we talk about during the entire game? We're tweeting during the game – Alabama is having so much success attacking the edge on mm. Michigan. That's where a lot of their success in the running game came from. Look, I look at a team who ran for 172 yards against what some people believe the best front seven or one of the better front sevens in Michigan in college football. They ran on them at will at times. It was the inability. And look, if you even take the sack yardage away from Milrow, he might have had over 100 yards rushing. I thought he did some really good things in the rush in the running game. They just could not get out of their own way. They could not prevent from shooting themselves in their own foot. And then it wound up biting them there at the end on a boneheaded decision by Jalen Milrow that cost them the game to tie it. Now, I will say this. Jim Harbaugh in Michigan has taken a, has taken on a lot of heat over – the last month about, well, you know, can they win the big one? Can they win a playoff game? And there were times where things weren't going their way either, but I never felt like they flinched, ever. I feel like they always had an answer to combat. Like, the moment was not big enough for them. And you saw the release that they had. Look at the celebration they had when they wound up winning the game. Yeah, but I, I got to say this, though. I, I see a lot of people getting on Tommy Reese where I don't disagree because I'm sure we're going to talk about this call at the end in overtime. Jalen Milrow's got to follow his guard into the end zone or he's got to throw the screen. Joe, he's got man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. They send the running back in motion 
He's got to throw the screen. He's got numbers. He's going to score if you throw the screen. Now, can he actually throw it a, a good enough pass to get it there? I don't know. But I don't know how bad of an execution-wise it could have – I mean, I don't know how bad of a play call it was, but it was very bad from an execution standpoint that it makes it look that worse. Uh, you know, you got a lot right, of right. who are showing the film. He's got to follow the guard. Like, I, I, I'm with you. I get the play call. That's not all on Tommy Reese. And here's another thing. Bama fans, I'm not going to let him skate on this one. Nick Saban approves that approves that call. If Nick Saban does not yes. know that Milrow is going to run the football in that situation, then that is on Nick Saban. He approves that play call, too. So it's not all on Tommy Reese, either. First, really quick, uh, not really a tangent, but I just have to add this in here. If Seth McLaughlin can't snap the fucking ball, why isn't he playing guard? Like, like I mean, I mean, I mean, dead serious. I'm being a little bit hyperbolic because I know I it's not that simple. Second, but though. he he has had so many issues, so yeah. many issues in important games throughout the year. He did it against Auburn. He did it in the SEC championship game, but we, it didn't really matter because it, they won that game and they won handedly. Why did it get to this point? And I know he's an upperclassman. I know he's a senior. But why did it get to this point where in the most important game of the year, he's still making those goddamn mistakes? If a kid can't snap, he's not going to figure it out. And you as a center could probably attest, if the guy doesn't have the touch to do it, he's not going to figure it out. I've watched guys mess up at snapping and not mm -hmm. be able to figure out how to do it. If you can't do it, you can't do it. Well, as someone who played center for a long time in their life, I don't really blame him on the second one. If the ball's at your knees, you got to catch it. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, okay, like I, I get it's not a great snap. If the ball is in between your chest and your shoulder blades, or knees and shoulder blades, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. It, it, but it still messes up the timing of the play. And I don't give two Rudy for, Poos. But you're for Mil Rue, I know. I, you're I, not okay. asking me about the play. What you're asking me about is the snap. Yes. Okay. Yes. But, okay. So catch the ball. I get that. It still messes up the timing of the play. And Jalen Milrow is somebody who does not always consistently make the right decision. So he is now reacting to the football, making the decision of, okay, I need to catch this football. And then before he can actually assess the situation in front of him, things are already happening. And that to me is what happened on that final play that led to the miscue. But snap was a little bit out of place. He's going to catch snap because the whole game he's thinking, I need to catch this snap. And it's out of place. He's distracted. And the minute that he sees that up front was blown up, he didn't even look at where his guard was, and he just ran right up the middle. I, I think that it all attributed to that. And that's why I think the play call was bad. Why are you adding so many moving pieces when you had so much trouble with the center quarterback exchange? It should have been something way simpler than what they called. Well, so let's talk about this because there are some key plays that I want to run through very quickly. So okay. we talked about the first half, okay, in the first quarter. Um Jim Harbaugh goes for it, okay, on a crucial fourth down late in the game. They actually ran that play earlier to the opposite side. That yep. was the Blake Corum first Blake Corum's first touchdown uh, that they get out in the flat for the score. But, see, here's the thing, though, Joe. Bama had a three and out after that. They hold Michigan to a three and out. They come back. Milrow gets sacked twice. So, what the game plan that they had in the first half – they just got bamboozled. Yes, I'm going to use that word. Bamboozled, okay, in the first half from an offensive line standpoint. And again, it would be one thing for me if it was just the D-line. The game plan that they had, the twists, the stunts, everything they had completely bamboozled that offensive line. But see, here's another one for me. The double pass, okay, mm -hmm. from Michigan, all right? Like, they, Alabama got lucky, but then gets the ball back in the first half, going in before halftime. Milro takes a sack. I know the field goal's good there at the end, but you're driving and you take such a bad sack that it just sets you so far behind the change that you can't overcome. But here's the thing, here's the thing for me. When Alabama took the lead, okay, late in that game, I was like, I texted you this. I'm pretty. I was like, man, Bama's got them right where they want them. It's exactly the typical Nick Saban type of game. They're down. They start come. You know, depth plays a, a issue into this, 
and they come storming back. I got to give J.J. McCarthy serious credit. I have been – we – we not yes, me. Yes, yes. We've both we been very negative about him. have been very negative on him, and I just got to – I got to admit, going down the stretch here, okay, and looking what he did, all right, the, he gets a tipped pass, okay, so he has an incompletion, a tip pass. It's third and it's third and ten. They get an eight yard run, and then on fourth and two, he hits Corum in the flat. Game completely changed after that. The momentum was completely on Michigan's side. Then he gets a big run, okay, along the sidelines, which should have been a flag. Remember when Tyrion Arnold knocked him out of bounds, and it was clearly a late hit. He should have been uh, another fifteen yard penalty. But then Wilson gets back-to-back catches and gets in for the score. J.J. McCarthy down the stretch is what separated them. The quarterback – so what are – what me and you talked about last week on what would win this game, what quarterback has the better fourth quarter will win the game is basically how we talked about it and what we said. And I thought because of how J.J. McCarthy had looked over the last six weeks, maybe it was Jalen Milrow because Jalen Milrow had had a better six weeks. It was J.J. McCarthy and his experience on what to do on, again, critical downs like fourth and two that separated him. Shout mm. out to J.J. McCarthy. He had a big night. Well, first of all, he looks like he's healthy now. Uh, whatever ailment he was dealing with did not <laughs> seem like he was impeded at all. I I, I know it sounds like I'm trying to crack a joke, but like in all seriousness, I, I think he's fine now. It seems like he was, he was fine in this game. I, the thing that I heard, I felt like the whole month, and I even said this a little bit, but I wasn't fully bought in on the statement, was that J.J. McCarthy had to you know, play the best game of his career. He had to play out of his mind. We needed to see a Michael Penix-type performance from him if they wanted to win this game. And I, I didn't really think that that was totally true in this week leading up to the game. All they needed from him was to make the throws on third down that they needed him to connect on and to not turn the ball over. And he didn't mm-hmm. do that. He did not have any critical, horrible mistakes that we've seen him do because Alabama is a team that is very, um, you know, they take advantage of opposing teams' mistakes and they're able to force those turnovers like we saw in multiple games this year. That didn't happen. If Michigan wants to win a national championship, that's all they really need from J.J. McCarthy. They need to keep running the football the way that they did and J.J. just needs to stay on schedule. He needs to not try to do too much And he did that this game. That's why he deserves so much credit for the way that he played because he didn't try to go over the top and take over the game and do all this extra shit. He just did his job. He connected on those throws and he let the running backs do their thing, let the tight ends do their thing, and the whole offense played great cohesively. I'm going to bring up one point, though, about Michigan. You better be, you might not get bailed out in 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 six days or whenever it is. You're not going to get bailed out when you play Washington with all those special teams mistakes that you did. Fielding the punt, having a muff punt that goes down at the one, the bad snaps, okay, from your position, okay? Yes. Talk about a center exchange. You're you're talking about the kid from Alabama. Well, can you snap the ball? Well, long snapper, that, hold on. Okay. Long snapper only has one goal. He really yeah. doesn't even have to block anybody. He just gets to stay. No, they there. run a they run a spread scheme. He's not, well, he's not standing there. He's running, you know, he's running down to cover on pun, and he's he he's, ain't doing that on you're field getting, goals. You're, you're getting he's getting big. He's you, you still have to you know get your head up and Joe. He's take a up white space. kid who's a hundred or is two hundred and twenty pounds. Hey, he, I've if you don't get big, that kick, kick that kick gets blocked. Bullshit. He that fat ass. All he does is eat brown sugar pop tarts. Okay, which by the way is the best pop tart out there. All I'm saying is, okay. We talk so glowingly about Michigan. If you continue to have those special teams issues, you can't have those special teams issues against Washington and continue to give them opportunities. You can you can have mistakes against a Bama team who offensively can be inept at times. What you're not going to be able to do is have those and we'll talk about Washington in a minute. You yeah. can't have those issues against Washington. Because what's so crazy, we're going to have a Pac-12 national champion if you had those issues against him. Well, I, I'm smirking 
while you're saying I'm that because shut, what your, shut your no, whore mouth. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm why you're smirking. No, 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 I'm smirking because you're right, but at the same time, Washington also made the same stupid, dumbass mistakes that that Michigan did. So it's like if I, they yeah. have special teams issues, Washington also clearly doesn't have their special teams. Here's completely the problem, in order. though, with Washington: the difference between Washington and Michigan. Yes, I know what you're saying. Uh, okay, the the big, the massive difference is. If you give, if you, it's different giving Michael Penix Jr. an extra possession. It's something yeah. completely different giving Michigan an extra possession. Good dude, I don't think that Michigan, when it's is all said and done, I don't think offensively they're great. I think they they do no. some good things. Okay, they got to get back to running the football a little bit more. I mean, they physically at the end there was pushing Alabama around because they got worn out. You cannot give Michael Penix extra opportunities or he's going to beat you. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's Stone Cold would say it's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Texas literally just did that. Yes, we'll talk about yes. that in a minute. You cannot do that. In line with that thought, and I wrote this down, we're going to end up previewing the national championship, obviously, tomorrow or Wednesday. I'm a little concerned about Michigan's playmaker situation. Like if if Texas couldn't keep up with Washington, and I I know that that Michigan defensive line it, it's very different. They've got a much much better pass rush than what Texas was able to bring to the table. Their their defensive line was mostly run stopping. That was what they're best at, not getting after the quarterback. They didn't do a very good job of that. But what I'm getting at here is that outside of Roman Wilson and like Loveland. Do they have enough guys to to move the ball down the field if they go down by 10 points? Texas was able to do that. I don't think Michigan can. I'm, I'm pretty worried about, about what's going to happen for Michigan in this in this game. Well, one thing is for sure. There were many opportunities late. Okay, let me bring this up too. Okay. Late in the game, Alabama got a field goal that made it 20 to 13. They were up 70 to 13 at the time. Mich uh, Michigan had just missed a field goal. Alabama goes down and gets their own field goal. But here's where I think that they went they went wrong and why Alabama, it's so wild to me. Okay, they're moving down the field late, all right? After Michigan just missed the field goal, McClellan gets multiple carries over 20 yards, so two carries for over 20 yards to start off the drive. Okay, Milrow. Completes a pass to Jermaine Burton. All right, whatever. It's second It's second and eight. You get another little run. You get another first down. Jalen Milrow gets another pass to Burton. So they're moving the ball, okay? But the penalties, the darn penalties for literally Alabama and Texas. Alabama winds up getting a procedural penalty, gets them behind the sticks. Jalen Milrow takes a sec. They got to kick a field goal. Joe, both Texas and Alabama – the penalties that they had late, mm. okay, and got flagged for, ultimately killed them. If if Alabama continues to run the ball and move the ball the way that they're doing it down the stretch, they're beating Michigan because mm. Michigan could not get an answer. All the momentum started shifting in bad, crucial moments. Here's the game for Alabama. Do I think Alabama should have won that football game, to be honest with you? Yeah, I do. Because there were multiple times that they could have overtaken – they could have won. They could have gotten ahead. They could have separated. But penalties and stupid mistakes by their quarterback ultimately lost them the game. That's it. It's not as if Michigan outclassed them. No, they didn't. It's not as if, if, if Michigan ran away with something. I do think that Michigan got a little lucky on some things. So did Bama. Okay, so did Bama. But you cannot, you cannot tell me that penalties did not play a part in this game down the stretch for Alabama. You can't. Mm -hmm. They did, and I understand what you're what you're getting at here, but we still have to acknowledge you can't make those mistakes. Them making those mistakes, like you're talking about here, that to me, just overall, the penalties, the the you know the the, the sacks that they took, right, everything that all the issues. That was one of the sloppiest games that Alabama played this year, and it felt reminiscent of the Alabama team last year that we criticized a ton for how, how sloppy they were doing all the same shit, all the same issues. The mistakes that they made and how sloppy they played cost them that football game. At the end of the day, that's what makes one team better than the other. One that doesn't make mistakes and one that does. One that 
has much better composure in important situations and can do the simple little details right and one that can't. And I think that Alabama got this far and was able to get into the playoff because they have young talent. But I feel like they're, they're just not away. they're just not oh you don't hold on a second. Wait, yeah. so wait, when you do you think that Jalen Milrow isn't can't be the quarterback then? Is that is that what you're saying? Or am, am I misreading that? No, they're a quarterback away from being where Saban wants them to be ultimately and getting back to his old old school style of doing things. So would you want somebody who's not Jalen Milrow? Personally, yes. I mean, right now, I mean, he he doesn't. It, it, it's tough because he's a young quarterback that doesn't have a, you know tons of experience, right? On the other hand, like so, for example, do you, would you give up on JJ McCarthy after what he did last year with Michigan? No, which is why I wouldn't really give up on Milro, but, but I, I, I would, would still bring her. competition into the room. Oh yeah, you're gonna have to. But Julian Sain's coming in. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll we'll see what happens there. Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for fifty percent off your first deposit. That is a fifty percent welcome bonus. Bet Online, where the game starts.